Have you ever been given a price for a new ATV or snowmobile seat and just about pooped yourself? Have you ever looked at something like this and thought, no way could I rebuild that and make it look good again? If you answered yes to either of those two questions, then you're watching the right video. I'm here to help. In this short tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can get the nastiest old ATV quad bike seat and make it look new again. The first thing to do is to remove the old one. The easiest way to do this is to cut close to the staples that staple it to its plastic base and then peel the remains of the old skin off. Once you've done that, you can grab a pair of pliers and pull the remaining strip that's got the staples in from the plastic base and then pick out the remaining few staples that will stay in there with a small screwdriver. Once you've done that, you give the base a clean up and it's ready to be worked on. Once the base and the remaining foam have been thoroughly cleaned with a stiff brush to remove any of the residues, you can set to work with expanding foam from an aerosol can. This is normally used for insulation in building projects, but it's a great way to build up heavy damage in foam seat squabs. To shape the foam, I use a selection of grinding sanding discs and wire wheel and other grinders. Depending on the effect that I'm trying to achieve. For this particular case, I'm going to go straight to the 3M paint stripping wheel. With that attached to the grinder, I can gently shape the foam back to the shape that I need. But first, I'm going to slice off the excess with a fish filleting knife. A nice sharp knife with a flexible blade gets in and follows the curve of the original foam. I'm going to remove the excess foam so that I won't have as much to grind and I'll make less mess. Once I've got most of this excess foam off, I'm going to take the seat outside the environment and grind off the excess with that paint stripping wheel. Quick clean up and we'll nip outside. I've put a sheet down on the ground to catch the excess. And what I'm going to do now is just like grinding bread. You must be very, very gentle with it. You can easily go too far, but you'll soon develop a knack and you'll realize how gentle you have to be. But we just gently shape the squab back to how it used to be. This can be done by hand, but if you do have an angle grinder, it really speeds things up. If you do have good editing software, you can speed up the film and make things even faster. Now it's time to use a high performance adhesive. There's multi-purpose adhesive and the high performance. Anything that's going to be outside in the hot sun. Um, 
one, I do recommend using the high performance adhesive. It's great on re-sticking car hood linings back up. Older cars sometimes get a bit droopy. That's because the sun has damaged the glue. With this, it shouldn't happen. What I've got here is backed quarter inch foam. Six millimetres thick, quarter inch, and it has a light backing on it so that this foam can be sewn. It doesn't matter whether it's backed or not for this particular application because all we're going to do is put a thin skin of foam over the repair work that I've done to soften out the edges. If this was a particularly nice seat and it needed to look good, again, I would put two layers of this foam on. But this is just a quick and dirty tidy up for my mate's quad bike. We're not going to spend too much time on it. I'm going to see if I can get this whole job done in under an hour. The seat cover is made of heavy duty vinyl. And I'm using Taylor's Chalk because Taylor's Chalk has a usable edge all the way round. So you don't have to keep sharpening the chalk in order to get a sharp line. So I'm going to cut 10 millimetres, 3 eighths of an inch, outside that line to give me a seam allowance. I'm not going to worry about finishing the bottom edge because I've left that oversized so that I can grab hold of it to pull it in under the seat and get the staples in. I'll just check that the shape looks good. Often I'll turn a piece over and try it the other way as well to make sure it's symmetrical or fold it in half like I am here just to check that both sides are the same. It does need a little trim. I'll trim off the excess to make it symmetrical and then I'm going to snip a little dart where it folds. I'm f flattening it out and I'll just put a wee dart in the top corner and that will mark the centre line. So right here in the corner, tiny snip and that dart will show me the centre of the piece. I'm going to line that up with the other piece of fabric that I've cut for the main cover. That will align the rear panel with the main panel which I'll also fold in half and put little darts in and then I can line that up with the centre line of the seat to make sure that it's symmetrical all the way around the seat. So here I am again, folding it in half and putting those two little darts at either end of the fold so that I can tell the centre line. When I fold up these two outside edges, can you see how at the rear of the seat it doesn't quite meet with an even 10mm seam allowance all the way around? That means that I'm going to have to change the shape of this rear piece just a fraction. I'm going to have to cut out a small piece of the rear so that it's not a dead straight line. And then when I wrap it back around, it will magically become a dead straight line and sew up nicely to my rear panel. So I'm just going around the rest of the seat now, making sure that there's enough to fold in 
and I can get all the corners and overlaps and overhangs exactly how I want them before I commit to sewing the two pieces together. I've just found another random couple of staples that I'm going to remove from the original cover. Plastic motorcycle seat bases are all quite different. This is a particularly old quad bike and this seat is just absolutely unavailable. So I've got to do what I can. I think Graham is going to be pleasantly surprised when he gets this thing back because it was in such a horrendous state I don't think he was expecting it to look as good as I think I'm going to get it. I'm working with the vinyl inside out because that makes it just slightly slipperier and it's easier for me to move around and get it sitting exactly how I want it. Because the seat is symmetrical it doesn't matter whether I work on the good side or the bad side. Now here's this piece I said that I'm going to have to relieve. I'm going to have to cut away 10 millimeters of the rear outside edge so that these two pieces that fold down will also get their 10 millimeter seam allowance. I'll just mark where it needs to go from and to and I'll slip the squab out of the way and just freehand draw a nice little line using my finger as a guide along the edge of the material tapering it in to those two marks and then we'll remove that 3 8 of an inch strip and next time when I fold the vinyl up around the seat base I'll have an even 3 8 of an inch 10 millimeter seam allowance all the way along that line. Just remake my little nick so that I can tell where the center is here we go. Line it all up and just check that that line looks good. There we go, nice and even all the way around now. So I'm going to whip that over to the sewing machine and sew these two pieces together. I'm just marking where the stitching must stop because if I don't stop there and I sew the whole thing up I'll only end up having to unpick those other little bits just so that I can get the folds to tuck in and be nice and tidy under the seat. So using those two little darts that line up the center line. I'm going to start in the middle and sew one half with my 10 millimeter seam allowance making sure that I've got the two pieces good side to good side so that when I open it out the stitching is inside. So this is a walking foot machine which helps no end when you have to go round curves and corners. Much much better than a slipper foot machine which is what the average domestic machine is. This is heavy duty, I use it for many many different kinds of jobs. So we just walk it around the curve stitch by stitch just to keep it nice and some kind of, just to keep it nice and smooth and then I'm going to look underneath in a moment and make sure that those two lines are coming up in the right place I want those two lines together there they are and I'm going to stop right there back tack three stitches and that's that half done so I'll now turn the whole thing over and go back to the center and stitch up the other side. 
This standing in the middle thing is good because when you're doing a long seam on a machine that doesn't have walking feet, you will find that the bottom gets fed along a little faster than the top and after a while, when you get to the end, the two ends won't meet up. So starting in the middle and working outwards is just a fail-safe way of doing it. So now I'm centralising the seat into the sewn-up seat cover and I'm just putting in one staple, front and rear. That will hold it centralised. The next thing I want to do is make sure that the seam is right on the edge of the back of the seat, so where it should sit. Make any necessary adjust adjustments to the front. Because of the dip in the seat, I'm going to have to make sure that the vinyl is just a little bit loose so that I can pull it down into that gut, if that's the word to use, into that depression in the middle of the seat. There's many types of vinyl available. There's um, two-way stretch, which is your normal vinyl, and then four-way stretch, which is thinner and has a different weave on the back, and that's used mainly for dashboards and intricate shapes. I'm using a heavy-duty vinyl, very strong. It's marine grade. It's designed with extra plasticizers and ultraviolet additives so that it will last well in the outside um, sunshine. Great for a farm bike seat. This thing will probably seldom see the inside of a shed. So there we are. That seam's now sitting right where I want it. So I'll get some staples in there. And I'll put more than one in this time because it's fairly confirmed that that's where I want it. Happy with that. So first I do all my stretching front to back and once I'm happy that I've got that sitting nicely I'll then start pulling down the sides. But you see how I've got to get the vinyl to come down into that gut, that belly? I'll leave it a little bit loose, pull it down onto these two tight points and just one staple on each side to hold it. And then incrementally I'll work my way around the seat, pulling a little bit here and a little bit there as it needs just to ease the whole thing down. Sometimes I have to use heat. On warm, warm summer days I can leave the seat outside and the hot vinyl soon attracts enough heat for me to get a little bit of more pliability into it. Sometimes you have to pull your staples out, so it's a good idea not to put too many in. Just one or two to hold it until you're happy with how it's all sitting. If you want to learn more about upholstery, check my other videos because I'm restoring a Land Rover at the moment and I've got another video that shows the full restoration of the foam and the seat covers on all three front seats of this gorgeous Land Rover job that I'm doing. Not too many staples, otherwise, if I've got it wrong, they're all going to have to come out again. Almost at the stage now where I need to get a bit of warmth into it. I'll get the heat gun shortly. There you go. Happy with the rear end of it. Cut off the excess now because this is a heavy vinyl. When I start double folding it and bringing in the sides over the top, I, I end up with quite a sandwich of vinyl. 
so it's nice to remove the piece underneath and keep that sandwich as thin as possible. I could do this with scissors, I could do it with a box cutter, I just happen to have the filleting knife here from when I did the foam. There's a, a dose of scissors. You just use what it takes to get in, trim off the excess, make it all sit nicely. When you're heating vinyl, it doesn't need to be particularly hot. You do need to be careful with the heat gun. You only want it the heat of a hot summer's day. Just a little bit too hot to touch. And that will turn it to absolute butter and you can pull it and stretch it, and make it do whatever you want. So there we go, bang, 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 bang. In go the last staples, and as I said, under an hour, and we've got a really nice looking motorcycle seat again. Graham's going to be stoked. Tiny House and Off-Grid Resources isn't all about fixing quad bike seats. It's about repairing, reusing, recycling, and generally saving money. If that sounds like a bit of you, see you in the next video.